these are the five things that you need to pay attention to before closing on a piece of land. All these things you will look at during due diligence. Number one, figure out the zoning and the setbacks. Zoning is really simply just every city has it, right? And there's areas where you have R1 zoning, residential zoning, you have commercial zoning, you have mixed use zoning, architectural forest, so on and so forth, right? So you wanna understand the zoning. There's usually also subsections within that. So there's like residential zone one, residential zone two, res residential zone three, and they'll allow different uses in there, different density, different types of product, single family duplex apartments, right? They'll allow different things within that zoning. So you really need to understand the zoning and then the setbacks within that zoning. I'll show you why the setbacks matter, right? So when we bought this lot, we're actually on one of the lots that we bought and the zoning for this is R1 and the setbacks, why they matter and what they really mean and what they really are. It's really simple, just from your lot line. So the actual lot line that you have to the side of your house, the requirements that the city puts on you. So for this one in this actual lot, the side setbacks were seven feet, the rear setbacks were 15, and then the front setbacks were 20, right? So you have to understand the setbacks because when you're looking at a piece of land and you're actually gonna put a building on it, you have to make sure that whatever you're gonna build on it will fit within the setbacks, right? You don't wanna go buy a piece of land and then realize what you're planning to build on it is restricted by the setbacks that have been put on the land. Okay, once you've figured out your zoning and setbacks, you need to make sure that you know where the utilities are. Let's go to the front of the house to take a look and I'll show you exactly which utilities I actually pay attention to. So number two, utilities where are the actual utilities on your lot right we're looking for where is water do we have a water meter where is sewer where is power and then where is internet and cable so on this lot you can come over here and you'll look okay here's our power right this is the power that's going to sweep into our house we actually run our temp power this is we now have permanent power but we, we run temp power on that right here what utility is this right you want to look and understand what utility this is this right here is our cable so you can see right here this is the tracer wire this is the cable that they put in so this is where we're going to get our actual internet for the house you come over here and you figure out okay this is my water meter right so we have our actual water meter what's good about this is sometimes when you're looking at lots there won't be an actual lateral water meter. All they'll have is the main in the street. And if that's the case, there's a huge additional cost that you have to plan for, right? And you wanna know that during due diligence so you can go and negotiate with the seller of this lot. In this case, we already had water, we already had power, we already had cable, and things were looking really good. You also wanna make sure that you understand where sewer is. So here on this lot, we're actually tying in to a septic tank it's a shared septic tank that we tie into, but we need to understand that and we need to know the rules of what this system is. This is a really unique area where you tie into a septic tank. It's not actually standard where it's just a septic tank with a drainage field. This is a holding tank where the solids stay in and then the fluids go into a city system. So again, that's why it's important to understand what type of utilities are on your lot. And if you're missing any, you need to make sure that you account for that and what the costs are gonna be to bring them in. You can really kill a project if you think you have water or you think you have sewer and it's in the street or it's a couple blocks down. I've personally done it and it costs a fortune to bring those things in. So make sure during due diligence you plan for that. The third thing, and this is more on the office side, is you wanna make sure that the lot doesn't have any easements, encumbrances, liens, or anything else that will restrict you from building on the lot. The way that you figure this out is when you actually go and put this piece of land into contract, it's gonna to go to a title company. That title company is gonna provide you with what's called a preliminary title report. That'll have everything that's on the lot, including any loans, any easements, any deeds, restrictions, really anything that you need to know that's been recorded against the lot will show up on that title report. And it's extremely important that you understand that title report because if you don't, you could run into a serious, serious problem with either a restriction on your lot you weren't expecting, right? Or a lien, which is really a payment that's due on the lot that you weren't expecting. So you wanna make sure that you analyze it. If you don't, when you're reading that title report, if you don't understand something in the document, just spend a couple hundred bucks to have a lawyer look at it. It'll be well worth the expense. All right, number four, you wanna make sure that there's no special inspection reports that are required, right? What I mean by that is that there's no geotech reports that are required any phase one environmentals or any soils reports that you may be required to actually have on the lot as you get going to building. Not all lots are gonna have it like this one. We didn't have to do anything like that, but during due diligence, I wanna make sure that I'm in the clear, right? There's plenty of other builds where we have to have a geotech report because they're on a slope or they're in an area where it requires that. So just make sure during due diligence, 
you don't get caught by surprise after you buy it a lot and they're like, hey, you need a geotech report or hey, you need a soils report or hey, you need actually a clean one, phase one environmental, right? So make sure during due diligence you understand those things. And number five, I like to always do at least a preliminary site plan on these bad boys so that I understand what I'm getting into. Like this is a flat lot. We'll go back outside to take a look. So it's not as much to worry about, but if I had a lot with a lot of grade to it, I want to make sure I did a preliminary site plan so that I understand if there's any additional grading or retaining walls or any issues that I might run into when I actually place the house on the lot. I want to know those costs ahead of time. So I'm always doing a prelim site plan, right? Or prelim grading plan. All right. So just to recap, when you are buying a piece of land during due diligence, number one, one, you want to make sure that the zoning and the setbacks check out for what you want to build. Number two, you want to check all your utilities. Do you have power? Do you have water? Do you have sewer? Do you have internet, right? You need to check on those things. Number three, you need to check if there's any easements, encumbrances, or any other issues on the lot. These will show up on the prelim title report, but make sure that there's no issues or anything recorded against the lot that will restrict you from building on it. Number four, make sure that your lot doesn't require any special reports like a geotech report, a phase one environment or a solar report. Sometimes you'll need it, sometimes you won't. Make sure you understand that. And number five, make sure that you do a prelim site plan, right? And lay out any grading that you may have. That way you're not surprised if you have a ton of dirt you need to move or you have to put a retaining wall in here or there. Hundreds of hands and many minds come together to bring these projects to life. The ground up game truly is one of the best games out there. It's a skill well worth learning. If you're interested in learning about it, please share, like, and follow, and we will see you on the next one, baby.